called Million Dunce March this weekend. Uh, no doubt stirred on by the dunce in the White House who was stirring up as much hatred as he can against the Caucasian people in plain English. I don't know how else to put it. You know, maybe I have Tourette syndrome. Maybe I've come to understand that's my problem. I have radio Tourette's. I don't know how to mince words. If I knew how to mince words, I would be a politician. I have radio Tourette's. So forgive me for telling it like it is. And these people would not be heard from were it not for the character in the White House. Were it not for the hatred coming out of Obama in his silk smooth delivery, every which way, sending out the signals, saying it's okay now to pop out of the woodwork and spew your hatred, we wouldn't be hearing from these people. But this is the dangerous situation we're in. He's not fighting the external enemies, and he is promoting the internal enemies. A toxic brew indeed. So as I say, you know, you got to go on with your life every day. And Fleet Week for me is it comes once a year. I look forward as a former boater. I don't boat anymore. I sold my boat. People say, how's your boat? I sold it two years ago. I was underwater for 15 years or more. I started with a little power boat, a carver. And then I worked my way up to something else. I forget, it was a flat-bottom carver. I rolled all over the bay. I used to panic when I was docking it out in Loch Lomond Marina where the winds were so bad. I mean, I have a, you know, let me tell you, docking a power boat can be very, very treacherous if you don't know what you're doing and if you have a flat-bottom boat and you don't know how to work the two engines. It was pretty bad when I first started. And then I moved up to a uh, Grand Banks, a 42, which had a deep keel and big propellers, changed my life completely. You can still get blown off a dock in San Francisco if you don't know what you're doing. And then I got the grand lady of them all, a 59-foot Grand Banks uh, Aleutian. Unbelievable. Big engines, big propellers, bow and stern thruster, became a different world altogether. So I was on the bay for many years, and I used to love spending my Sundays basically alone. I went out with my dog. I don't like talking to people on a boat. Two reasons. One, you could run someone over on a, on a kayak run over one of the morons in a kayak who are just like bicyclists. They think you, sh you should see them in the middle of a swell. You're supposed to see them because they're so perfect. I'll get back to Navy, the Navy in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. So discount the first 30 minutes of my show. I was only doing Radio Tourette's for you. And um, everything I said is 100% true, but discount it. So let me go backwards. So it was Fleet Week. Again, I'm going to talk about it because, you know, I'm inspired by it. And if you do go to my website, and I invite you to do so, michaelsavage.com, see the Fleet Week pictures. Fleet Wheat pictures. The fleet wheat is very good wheat. It's gluten-free wheat. I mean wheat. Anyway, the, the <laughs> words are fun. Fleet wheat. So there's a picture of yours truly next to the big tent where they had the civilian guests in there for the food. and the. I didn't tell you about the dancing girls yet. I was shocked. I mean, a Navy ship with entertainment, three gorgeous girls dancing with a guy like a 40s review. I'm flying over the cuckoo tree, no one else but me, but me. And I had already four beers at that point, and a vodka, and I was feeling no pain, as Jackie Gleason used to say. And I was stuffing my face with food. So my assistant, Ryan, was videoing it. Ryan, could you put that up, the dancing girls? Ryan, he left already. I have such a crack staff. Put up the dancing girls on michaelsavage.com. That's all they want to see. They don't want to see me. So after the show, there were the speeches. After the eating, I went outside. I can't take speeches. I'm sorry. I'm just not polite. I hung around outside taking pictures of the uh, dusk with the city behind us. And then all of a sudden, the music started. And there were three girls dancing in, like, 40s outfits. And a guy with, like, baggy uh, zoot suit doing, like, music of the 40s. If you were doing a film of the 40s, You'd hire this group to sing 40. They even broke into this, like a Yiddish song, which I thought was crazy. I'm here, Mr. Shane. What is that? How did that happen? I thought I was at a bar mitzvah in Queens in the 1950s. 
But anyway, there was a Navy ship, and all those sons, Barmir Bista Shane was being sung. I didn't get that. That must have been popular in the 40s before America was replaced, the Jews were replaced by Arabs, by Obama. Yeah, that's another thing I noticed. As he's displacing the white people in America with folks from everywhere on earth except Europe, did you notice that he's pushing the Jews kind of in the background and bringing in the Arabs? And that there's a, a lot of crime against Jews in America? Didn't notice that either, huh? The last to notice that will be the liberal Jews. Oh, yeah, they're the last to notice anything. Geniuses, billionaires, trillionaires, geniuses in art, medicine, science, business. They don't even notice what's going on around them in their own country. A Molotov cocktail was thrown at two Orthodox Jews in the middle of the streets of New York yesterday by an Arab who said, I will kill you. Everywhere you turn, you see this going on. But all right, don't pay attention. Put your head in the sand. So anyway, the music was pretty good. And the dancing got me, you know, so I jumped in front of the camera. So what for a minute on the stage? What is a big deal? It was just I was in a good mood. <clears throat> and there's the ship. It says, let's roll. The food was great. I violated my anti-cholesterol regimen. I must have had more saturated fat and cholesterol in that one meal than I had in the entire pre previous week. Although I must say I'm craving it lately. I got to talk about this for a minute. Because, you know, there's one thing I'm not going to tolerate, stupidity. I will not tolerate it no matter who it comes from, left, right, center. But when I hear, when I hear people get on the radio who you trust and say to you that there's no such thing as worrying about fat or cholesterol in food, that it's all hogwash, I'm sorry, I have to criticize it. And then to have the audacity to say that you believe it because the government tells you to believe it, I'm sorry, this is my field. And I'm not going to listen to an uneducated adult talking to, to you about health and, and medicine. I won't listen to it. You know, medicine is based upon science. Science is a process. Science is based upon evidence. The evidence is very clear, not pretty clear, very, very clear that those who eat high cholesterol, high saturated fat diets, die at a much higher rate of, cholesterol, of uh, uh, heart disease, coronary heart disease, atherosclerosis in specific. It's not a disease of the heart, it's a disease of the blood vessels. This has been well known for a long period of time, going back to the 1950s. The best studies in the early days were by the Shute brothers, S-H-U-T-E, geniuses, you never heard of them, who showed definitively that if you use mega doses of vitamin E, you can reverse this. Then there were the great studies on other things that built slowly to the epidemiological studies, which showed, especially the Framingham study in Framingham, Mass, of huge numbers of people, again, definitively showing those who were on high cholesterol, high fat diets, had much higher rates of atherosclerosis, therefore heart disease. And you have to know this is based on scientific evidence, not upon feelings. So you say, well, how do you, how do you explain those who live to 90 who eat garbage diets and smoke cigars and drink whiskey? I, I defined them in 1983 in a book of mine as nutritional rogues. There are always going to be people who can abuse their bodies and live to a ripe old age. The rest of us are not as blessed as the nutritional rogues. Most of us aren't. They're the outliers. Most of us don't have that luck. You see what I'm saying? So we have to, like, watch what we eat, we exercise. That's common sense. But to throw all of common sense out with the anti-government rhetoric that is raging in the, in the right-wing community now is nonsensical and sickening. So I watch my diet, but I'm saying I violated it because while I was in graduate school many years ago, I remember going to my professor and saying something about this, saying, no, no, I don't want to eat that cheese because it's too rich in cholesterol. And she said, she remember she said to me, she said, it doesn't matter what you occasionally do. Your body can handle it. It's what you do on a regular basis. So that's why I occasionally have a pizza. I love it. You know, see what I'm saying? So it's like what you do on a general basis. Your body will adapt to it. Anyway, that was a fun night. Sunday was, uh, I'm reviewing the weekend. If I read you the news headlines, you're going you're gonna to get sick. Okay, I'll read them to you. And the sound, you think I'm just stalling because I don't have news. Oh, I have news. Let's start with the f stories. And they're not ranked in order. Uh, Jeremiah writes as Jesus was a Palestinian. That is so racist, it's frightening. There was no such thing as a Palestinian when Jesus walked the earth. He was Jewish. Even every Christian, every educated Christian knows that. But to black revolutionaries like Barack Obama and Jeremiah Wright, this is the distortion of history that they use in order to marginalize Jews.
next. Cubans retire to Florida with help from U.S. taxpayers. Did you know they're flooding in now? They're, they never lived here, but they're flooding in now under some stupid law going back forever. They can come right in and collect supplemental security income, free a government apartment, food stamps. They come here at age 75 into, Cuba, into, into Miami. They get a free apartment, food stamps, 700 a month. And the guy says, you know, they're much better than pensions in Cuba. He says, we get $7 a month in Cuba. Here I get $700. He says, I have an American flag in my house. I'm happy. I want to be an American citizen. Have you ever heard of a stupider nation on earth? Have you ever heard of anything as dumb as this? Cubans retired to Florida with help from U.S. taxpayers. That should burn you up. Let's see. Uh, Obama defends Syria strategy, criticized Putin's leadership role. Stupid. We have a president, you know, if you were doing a cartoon, he would be deaf, dumb, and blind as to what he's actually doing in the world. The man truly does not know what a loser he actually is. No one tells him. He can actually re reverse reality in his head and say Putin is the loser and he's the winner when the whole world is laughing at him behind his back. How does he get away with it? Because he's blind and he's deaf to the truth. He's blind to the truth. No one ever shows it to him. And if he ever hears about it, he says these are just haters of black people. They hate you because you're black, Barack. They hate you because you're black, Barack, not because you're a complete and utter failure and a laughing stock around the world. And so he lives in a fantasy world. Numbers USA president says Paul Ryan is terrifying, an open borders guy that steeps out of every pore of his being. I'd like Trey Gowdy to be speaker, by the way. Someone like that. DNC chair, the ever, ever insane Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz told CNN's Dana Bash Sunday that all of the remaining Republican candidates are trying to out-Trump Donald Trump and are saying, quote, yeah, let's kick women. Let's kick them and immigrants out of this country. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz is by definition insane, which is why she's the chair of the DNC. Next. Wesley Pruden wrote a great article, The Cipher in the White House. That was a great article. That's all. There's more, and the sound, and the this, and the that, on the Savage Nation. I don't know, there's no one listening right now. I can tell you right now, it's a very small audience. Another holiday. Uh, another three-dayer in America. Does anyone work other than me? Again, no one's working. Another another holiday to stay home and do no. What do they do on the day off? What are people doing? I'm trying to think what an average per a normal person would do. Not average, normal. Let's see the golf bag. That would be one thing. That's very exciting. Uh, a drive in the country. That's exciting. Yeah, that that really moves me. Let's see. I I don't know what an average. What are you doing a day off? How could you have a day off from from using your brain? What do you mean a day off from what? From thinking? Well, excuse me, since most Americans. Always have a day off. I don't think that they need another day off. Then maybe they need a day on. Speaking of television, Homeland stank. I don't know what's with it. It's like so. The only good scenes were when the assassin character killed the uh, Muslim woman in the burqa who was recruiting young American moron girls to become suicide bombers. After she went in the bathroom and changed into a full, you know, head covering job and she came out. And he saw it was her because of the tweaking of the car with the key. And he put two and two together and he went up to her, pulled out his gun, pulled down her thing. She looks at him and her eyes show abject terror and he shoots her in the brain. That I liked. That was good. That was very good. Other than that, I mean, it was, you know, I don't like Homeland anymore. What, oh, the affair I watch after Homeland. I don't, what a stinker that is. Yeah, it's so boring, man. It's worse than a, than a, it's worse than a bad romance novel, which I don't read. The Affair. Well, who would, I, I tuned it in the first year was pretty good. The, it, was, it got, you know, the married guy with four kids, younger woman, waitress, da 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 da, comes from the towny crowd in the Hamptons, the fishing community people, but they're really coke smugglers because they can't make payments on the, on the family farm. It was good the first year. This is so bad. You know, I, who cares about another person's affair? I mean, that's, that's exciting. Everyone's just waiting for a nude scene, that's all which I turn it off. I don't even want to watch it. It's just uncomfortable. So that's a stiff. There's nothing to watch anymore on TV. I was sitting in the dark uh, last night watching it, with the two of them. I do a back-to-back -back on Sunday nights. I do a Homeland, and then I do with The Affair, and then I go to sleep. So I'm sitting in the dog is on the floor, and I'm talking to him. And he hears me like saying, Teddy, it's a stiff. My father used to say that about bad <laughs> movies. He would go to the movies, God rest his soul. 
<clears throat> he come back and he give a he give a, a 